Welcome to Prime Sports with me, Razak Wasbao. Now, President of the Ghana Football Association, Kaya Tekrek, who is advocating for the lifting of the ban on alcohol-producing companies sponsoring football clubs in the country. A regulation by the Food and Drugs Authority, which bars these companies from advertising in sports, is intended to protect minors by reducing its exposure to them. I was speaking at Parliament's Select Committee on Sports Probe into the State of Football, Kurtz argued that the regulation deprives clubs of much-needed revenue and needs to be reviewed to aid the development of the game. There is a big space for companies who are involved in the, in the alcoholic industry to invest in football. A typical example is Guinness Ghana. We've had numerous meetings with Guinness Ghana. FDA says no, they can't come into football. Meanwhile, the biggest football product in the world is the European Champions League, and it's been heavily consumed by the youth of our country. Henneken sponsors the Champions League. Every youth of this country is watching the European Champions League. Why are we depriving the sports sector of this possible revenue uh, stream? The World Cup, we were all in Qatar. Budweiser was the sponsor. All the adverts were consumed by all of us here in Ghana. So again, I'm coming back to my initial position. How do, do we see football and how do we want to position football? Ghanaians love football. Everybody, 30 million so, plus, love football. And we need to see football and pay attention to football. Uh, your, your, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. It's also important for us to really position how we see our investment in football. Do we see our investment in football as a social investment or as a commercial investment? A lot of our peers, a lot of the MAs, a lot of the government mm -hmm. sees their investment in sports and in football as a social investment. This is a lot for us to think about. Very well. Now, Safold Ventures, one of the companies uh, that have signed up for this man's Joy Sports Invitational Tournament, is targeting six trophies. The event which will take place at the University of Ghana Stadium on October 26 will be graced by 24 companies to compete for corporate pride and also network. Now, uh, despite these numbers, the chief executive officer of the cleaning, uh, clearing and forwarding logistics company, Adolf J, insists that he has the quality to win six uh, trophies. There is more in this report. Sapporo Venture is known for its excellence in clearing, forwarding, and delivering your goods to your doorstep. But beyond the office wall, there's this incredible atmosphere that binds this group together. <laughs> has been executed many times and they are ready to showcase their athletic prowess again at the upcoming Joy Sports Invitational Tournament on October 26th at the University of Ghana Stadium. You want to win how many? Six out of seven. Wow, six out of seven. It's possible, it's possible, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible, it's possible. What are you doing behind the scenes to come and win those six, six medals? We waited four solid years when we went to recess. All along, we're preparing ourselves. We know a day will come. So we were toiling, waiting for you to come. As long as you've come. So we are prepared already, before you prepared. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Before we prepared, you were prepared already. This team is leaving nothing to chance. Led by a dedicated chief executive officer, Mr. Adolf Ajay, they are here to redefine corporate fan games and networking. Has been sent to Stanford Bridge to work in the America. So Asana is not in here. We'll be back with new tactics and new formations. And, and your team members will score like Old Palmer? 
more than Kopama because Kopama can score and give passes. So I have the players. I won't tell you all, the, all, all, all of them, but I am hiding you from other, other, other corporate teams in that if I tell you a strategy, they will map a strategy to man them. So I won't tell you. <laughs> Safford Ventures is preparing for a seamless tournament experience, ensuring the team's focus remains solely on their performance. So I will bring you more interaction with the participating companies. Now, Great Olympics began their journey towards a return to the Ghana Premier League in a narrow win over Crystal Palace in the Access Bank Division 1 League. Now, this follows a half breaking relegation from the top flight on the final day of last season's Premier League. Now, despite this challenging situation, the club remains one of the most successful teams in Ghana, having secured victories in the FA Cup competitions and league title as well as the experience of competing at the continental level in Africa. Now, we explored the club's rich history uh, in this special feature by Joy Sports' Daniel Crante. Hello, players, and welcome to the Accra Sports Stadium in Sunday Night Football, match day 33 of the Ghana Premier League. This is a battle for survival. It's a capital's derby. Hearts of Oak against their city rivals, Great Olympics, but this game has got different dynamics to previous games that the two teams have played because these two are in a battle to survive the Ghanaian top flight. A defeat for both Arsenal and Olympics might potentially take them to Division 1 football. Last season's Ghana Premier League campaign saw Accra Great Olympics relegated from the top flight for the third time in seven seasons. This all-familiar story of relegation has become ever so synonymous with the Accra Bay side, making mockery of the current state of the club. Life as a Great Olympics fan today is certainly far from pleasant. But let me tell you a story. A story of a time Accra Great Olympics were so good, they earned the nickname, The Wonder Club. In 1922, Cape Coast and Accra became the first colonial cities in Sub-Saharan Africa to host former leagues in the Gold Coast. Accra Hearts of Oak emerged inaugural winners of the Accra Football League at the expense of city rivals Accra Stanfast, and the two clubs continued to be the dominant sides in Accra for the next few decades. Then in 1954, Accra Stanfast were handed a surprise defeat at the hands of Kumase Cornerstones, which sparked a huge row between Stanfast team manager S.O. Glover and some board members over match-fixing claims. S.O. Glover, as a result, left the club together with some management members and players to form a rival team in Sakumotoshi, a suburb of Accra, by name, Accra Great Olympics. The early 60s saw the formation of another Accra Bay side, Dr. Nkrumah's very own Real Republicans. With only two teams eligible to use the Accra Sports Stadium as their home grounds and an automatic slot given to the Republicans in that regard, Olympics had to face rivals Hearts of Folk in a justifier and they lost. The Daddy Boys had to settle for the Tema Sports Stadium, but that seeming misfortune ended up being a huge positive. Olympics had to contend with the Tema Stadium. But they made uh, good use of the stadium. In fact, they turned out to be called the wizards of uh, Tema. You know, at that time, we didn't have the hotel. Really. They had some strange winds blowing you know, from the west. So, and it, it comes normally uh, around five, that's the second half. You know. That's where you balloon the ball and the wind carries it so far. And Olympics mastered the situation so much that whenever they come out in the second half, they won't lose. Fast forward to the 1969-70 season. Ghana had returned to a civilian government with Dr. Buzia being sworn in as the first prime minister since Nkrumah was ousted. In the same vein, the lives of great Olympics fans were about to take a positive twist. For me especially, I grew up in Polygon, part of Accra called Polygon. And uh, what I remember very well was that uh, great Olympics used to come and wear their dresses uh, at one house, just about one and a half kilometers off our route, in uh, the house of one very powerful man called Mr. Johnson. I think he's deceased now. So anytime they came over to where they just is, then imagine our kids will be there. Then you see them in a bus or a truck or so driving, driven, just by us to the stadium with the Olympics flag flying. It was so momentous for us. We all ran up to the roadside. So 
actually for a lot of us in that generation who grew up in that, that particular area, most of us are Olympics fans, and that was how it all started. And to make matters very lively, of course, those were days where the media wasn't so pronounced, so you would hardly be following proceedings on the telly or even radio. I think we were young, so those who were old enough were listening to radio, but you'd be there and then all of a sudden around 5 30, 6 p.m. when the match match would have ended at an Asport Stadium, you see them coming back, especially with different then led by we had this powerful carnival group led by one a uh, very popular guy in Polygo, Adama Sinatra. I think it was a nephew or relative of uh, Mr. Stanley Giri Brands. So they'll be drumming the pound of in another track, following these people with the Olympic flag flying. You know, so as kids, we all run to the Mr. Johnson's house to go and await them get down from the bus. And it was so much fun. I think growing up, I never, I never knew Olympics could even lose a match. Led by star striker and captain Jones, I took with you was part of Ghana's 1965 AFCON squad. Olympics, after years of pushing ever closer, won the league title, becoming the only side in Ghanaian football history to win the league without losing a single game. At that time, we had the likes of good uh, performance, like John Awu, uh, Fred Tete, uh, I'm talking about the goalkeepers. You talk about Edward Boy at the right fullback. You talk about Banama Hafu, left fullback. Asani, right half back, and the center half was Aruna Musa. And then when you come to the midfield, you, you could talk about Omamisa, Omamisa and Ajiaku. They were mining the midfield. You know, at, at that time it was a uh, 4 2 4 uh, formation. So this were they put money in the midfield. Then you talk about attackers, you talk about Joe Kobla, you talk about Ayama, then you talk about John Satu Pifu, who happened to be the skipper and then to go at the left front. In a bizarre but hilarious turn of events, that season did not feature a Gama and Chadabi between the eventual winners Olympics and Hearts of Oak. You know, we were supposed to play across of Oak, but they traveled to overseas. They couldn't make it. They said they were coming today, tomorrow, and the, and the match was fixed, but they didn't come. So eventually the two, two points and then three goals were. So in that particular season, we never played them. In fact, they decided to come and play. But when they saw our squad, they took to their ears. They, they thought they could meet us with their second string and squad. But when they came and then they saw our big boys on the <laughs> field of play, they took the best decision by not honoring that much. Winning the league qualified Olympics to the African Club Championship, now known as the CAF Champions League. It was the first time the club was participating in the competition, but they were not about to market themselves as newcomers. After a 3-1 aggregate win over Kenyan Giants AFC Leopards in the first round, Olympics found themselves staring at elimination after losing 2-1 in the first leg of the second round against Malagasy champions MMM Tamatavi. However, a Jones Atukwefio hat trick, in addition to two goals from Peter Lamte and one each from Joe Kobler and Robert Hammond, propelled Olympics to a resounding 7 0 second leg win at the Accra Sports Stadium, the biggest win by any Ghanaian side in the competition till date. A 2 0 aggregate win over Uganda's Coffee United set up an all Ghanaian semi final between Asante Kotoko and Great Olympics. Uh, Olympics were so happy to play in the championships because uh, they had taken the lead from us, you know. They had entered Africa first. So meeting Kotoko, the, the defending champions, we thought it was a good, good match. And the death, sudden death of Robert Mensah gave a different, a whole lot, a different di dimension to the match. You know, supporters, some, even supporters were uh, going around with their uh, uh, stories, you know, that uh, maybe Olympics might have uh, <laughs> masterminded his death. But it was a well attended match, especially uh, this the first time two leading clubs from Ghana were meeting in the competition. Yeah. So come, I think November 7th, yeah, it was also to November 7th, uh, fully packed. Across the room, 
very balanced game. And uh, Olympics took the lead. It was Zinata Jones, I took it from. Jones was a very good player from the academic, academic side up to uh, Republicans. No, he was playing for uh, Republicans. That will come to that. So he, he scored the first goal. I think it was the 50th minute or so. And it took uh, quite a long time. Eh? Abukari, their top scorer, in about the 85th minute, he got the equalizer. So the stage was set for uh, a grand second leg in Kumasi. You can just imagine. The stadium was filled to capacity. It's quite a balanced game. And it was going to end in a draw. A minute to time, Sunday Ibrahim from nowhere got the match winner. So we can just go to the stadium. Uh, Ten red, no Kotoko supporters. Everybody was happy about the ten. Olympics had to be content to their semi-final berth. It was a good debut for him. Then, yeah. Despite the semi-final disappointment, Olympics exited with their heads held high in a debut campaign, which saw Captain Jones Atukifu pick up the prize for the competition's top scorer. After competitive seasons in 1972 and 73, Olympics claimed their second league title in five years in the 1974 campaign. In 74, you can say that, as far as I'm concerned, I'll say that 1974 league was the most keenly contested league in the annals of Ghana and football. It was a neck-to-neck -neck finish. The champions were decided at the last match when we had to play against Azakes in second league. And Accra of Folk also played against Nkumasi and Cornerstones in Accra here. And, and then we, we just needed a draw as we were going to play on the proper light. So they thought they could manipulate the match if the results are not favorites. Balu and Bio we drew 2 2 with Azakes and were home and dry. The significance of the 1974 league title cannot be understated as it was the birth of the coaching career of Cecil Jones at Tukwifu. In fact, in 1974, he was a registered player. But a calamity befell the club. Our punk ruler, who happened to be Mr. Seth Rojateto Okansi, died. At that time, we were having a German coach, Lowenstein, Karl Lowenstein. But I think after the death of this man, and uh, the coach decided to leave. And then John Satukufi was brought in as a caretaker coach to take over from the expatriate. And lo and behold, Joe too was also a very good coach. In fact, he, uh, his, play mate, his play mates knew him as somebody who could rise to the occasion. So when the need arose, the management did not, you know, bother to look for anybody from outside. But just took up the man, man and then uh, Olympus was good to go. An FA Cup triumph followed a year later in 1975 with a victory over BA United. And the Wonder Club also claimed the Champion of Champions trophy in 1976. Olympics have since struggled to replicate the glory of the 70s. It's, it's, it's a bit difficult to really put your finger, but I was, one thing I'll say could be the fact that the there isn't that much unity in that part. That, that, that is a fact that much as much as it may be unpalatable, it's a fact that you have to talk about. Then uh, one other thing I believe is that most people who sacrificed for the club in one way or the other in the past, whether as uh, managers or administrators or board members or even supporters who sacrificed a lot, often ended up leaving the club very peaked and sad and uh, as it were you know, moving out of the club with a lot of pain in their hearts you know so you see they move back and then they, they do not want to join the club or have anything to do with the club not losing sight of what the club once was is the only way to get back on track and with that peace friendship and unity which are the three pillars on which the club was founded are important Eslo Glover's dream blossomed and shines even till this day. Regardless of the state of the club, 
Olympics is still alive. And maybe one day, hopefully sooner rather than later, they will be champions again. In the words of Ohinejan, they dared and became daring. They persevered and conquered. Rushing in with glorious impunity where angels fear to tread, Olidade became the Wonder Club. Okay, we are great to Olympus team. We are sure it's for you know. Great to bring peace with that return. Oh, great Olympus team. We go Olympus Well, that's all we have for you on Prime Sports tonight. Thank you very much for your company. We have more stories on myjoyonline.com.